How's everyone doing? Due to one of the requests of my viewers uh, making a general overview of Windows 8 this is sort of just like a basic introductory video explaining just some of the things about Windows 8 that people may want to know when they go to upgrade. The most common thing is the, the new layout. The new start menu is the Metro user interface which is essentially just tiles and uh, applications so when you start off you have the your stock applications you know like your mail calendar desktop desktop is now an application on Windows 8 and uh, if you click on desktop it's very similar to Windows 7 XP it's actually the same taskbar without the start that's in the corner here but you still get your notification area and your normal calendar and clock desktop icons you can still customize the same way your background screensaver sounds and everything essentially with Windows 8 you get sort of a feel that there's two operating systems one it seems to me it feels like you still have Windows 7 and two you get Windows 8 because realistically if you were to go to the, the control panel all the settings are basically the same as it would be on the older operating system that's just one aspect of it I'm not using a keyboard right now I just have to click everything so there you get your older control panel and there it's pretty much just the same as previous operating systems the counts are you can link them to Windows Live now essentially your email and that syncs your passwords, your calendars, even from your iPhone Windows 8 phone, you know, whatever you have so there's the, the control panel on desktop mode now on here if you go over to the the right corner of the charm toolbar you see the search, share, start menu devices connected so in this case, the second screen, I'm using my HGTV right now as a monitor. Your settings here, you can control the tiles, help, internet and everything, brightness. Now the PC settings here, this is where it feels like there's two sides to the operating system. Here is uh, the second interface for all your settings. It's essentially a control panel, but in a different way. Here's where you control your lock screen photo, your applications, which ones you want, like detail and view. By default, it's calendar. Start screen, you can change your backgrounds, themes, different backgrounds and highlight colors. As you can see, this one's a, a black background with a red. Your account picture, again you can import it from Windows Live, it's normally where it gets it from. Users, you know, Windows Live again, where you can add them just on your system. Notifications, search, share, and all the settings you see here, I'm not really going to name them all off. Wireless by default on uh, Windows 8, it seems that you can see hidden networks that do not broadcast or SSID whereas previous versions of Windows you'd have to manually add it as a as a new connection ease of access here is pretty simple as well it's not very in depth you get your high contrast mode just like that and you just click a button here whereas before you'd have to navigate to the settings to do that Here's where you'll choose to synchronize your settings, your favorites, your your themes, background, you know, themes. Favorites, I'm pretty sure, it's synchronized to your passwords. And you can choose, like, if it's mobile over metered connections. <coughs> That's another thing, you always have the option for metered connections, they don't get charged for data. <coughs> Uh, on this side here, the left side is where you can 
the view of the apps that are open. So let's say I get the calendar open as well. Here you can see the calendar. I'll go to the, the start menu. And here you'll see the, the apps that are open, desktop, calendar. Calendar here is very simple. You just click on a day. Then you just add the event. And if it's synced to your phone, it will also appear on your phone along with any alerts. It's really convenient. Again, this is just a desktop. Same thing as uh, Windows 7, essentially. I'll open iTunes. This is the new one that was just released. And there you have iTunes. You still do everything in the same way here, too. And you can actually just close this app. To close an app, you click the very top and you drag it straight down, and it's closed. Now, <clears throat> when you go to another app and one's already open, that app suspends, so it's not using the resources when it's in the suspended mode, much like on an iPhone. Uh, here, you get your other applications like Smart Glass to connect to your 360. If you have a tablet, I think you can use a tablet as a screen. There's an option for that. The store is another new thing, obviously. Here's where you download all your, your new apps. This is the Spotlight. It's basically just like the iTunes store, but for the applications. So top free. And here are your top free applications. Smart Glass is actually downloadable. Here you'll see the, the highlighted apps that are free. Amazon, eBay, you know, shopping. Games, social. At this point in time, there isn't a Twitter or a Facebook app yet. But, you know, Skype, and a few other networks. Entertainment, photos. Here you can get a some decent photo editing software. This is sort of like Instagram. Essentially Instagram for your desktop. Except you have more control obviously. You can crop, resize, change exposure, color, everything. Not really going to get into that because it's a separate application. Your updates will always appear at the top here. You can review them click install here and it will install all the updates by default typically and you can close this and it will actually still install in the background aside from that you have your other applications throughout the <coughs> the metro here if you click this in the right corner the bottom here it's sort of like the show hide desktop on windows 7 click that and you can view all your tiles. As you can see I don't have very many on this system here. But you can scroll through. If you have lots of apps you can go actually scroll right through the start menu. But since I only have a few of them you can't really go anywhere. Here's where you have your typical programs. A lot of them are the older style. They're not apps. Microsoft Office 2010, CCleaner, Paint, iTunes, that type of thing. Up here you can click your name and change your account picture, lock, sign out, or go in as another user. <coughs> another thing I've noticed about this operating system when you go to the devices here, I don't know if it will do it on this system, but it does on my main desktop. You go to your devices, and if you need to change any information on your router, instead of manually looking up the IP or if you know it, typing it in, you can simply just click on the device from this menu here, and it will go straight to the login screen. I'm not exactly seeing it. 
It doesn't show up on this computer here, but on my desktop, you just simply click on the, the modem just like it's uh, any other device, and it'll take you to the login screen. So you don't have to look up your IP, type that in, and then make your way there. It just goes straight to it. Overall, I believe uh, Windows 8 is pretty much what it's been hyped up to be. You know, in terms of upgrading, if you're not sure about it, if you have, you know, money to throw around, you want to upgrade your computer, by all means, go ahead. But in terms of ergonomics, I'd say it would be simpler. Uh, one of the main features is the search now. So let's say I were to type in, I'll look up CCleaner. Just type it in, it searches everything. You can search the web, your SkyDrive, see where it is. Just seeing the SkyDrive. Yeah, your SkyDrive, your photos, people, everything you see here you can search, even Wikipedia. Settings as well, you can search all your settings that are available, all the files on the computer. So you find your application and you just click on it. And there you go, it opens it up in desktop. And from here everything functions just as it normally would. No changes really. If you right click, this is where you can edit your tiles. You know, remove them, turn the live tile off so it won't keep updating. You can uninstall them, unpin them, all that. The, the browser is another thing that's slightly different. Here, when you first get to it, you probably won't know exactly what to do. So on my home page here, normally when you're browsing, it's full screen by default like this. You don't have your you know, back button where you can see it, home button. If you want to go back, it'll be on the side here. So, Go to my Google Plus account, which I don't really use. If you get your back button down here, you can see. You can edit the URLs there, forward. Refresh. You can pin to the start menu, sort of as a shortcut. It makes a tile for it. Add to favorites. Your settings here. If you can't view videos on uh, certain websites, you can view it on the desktop. It'll open up in the old style window. A lot of times when you're trying to watch movies, it'll give an error about a flash player. You just simply view it on the desktop and it should be good. So back here, the back button's on the left side here. To go forward again, it's on the right side. And if you right click at the top, you have your tabs. You can create new ones, close your old ones, go to your favorites menu. If you left click on the actually click on the bar here you can view your frequent websites your ones that are pinned favorites appear on this side then you just simply click on it so if you're here I want to go to Kijiji you just navigate it like that so I open up a new tab and again by default you get this menu here and it's convenient on a new tab you can go to whatever website You're constantly switching between social media you can go between Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Kijiji you know whatever you have this is just what I have in the pin here so I open a new tab I want to quickly go over to Google Plus again there you go so I'm done doing whatever here. Left click, back over, and I can work on Kijiji. Fire up another tab. 
this time go to YouTube. And there you go. You just switch like that. Here's where you can you know, edit your settings, private tabs, close all of them, except for the one you're viewing. So you're done with this. Click at the top, drag down, or you can dock it. No, I guess not. Sometimes you'll have the option to dock to where you drag it off to the side here. I'll get another program going and see if it'll do it. I'll open the store again. I think it only works in desktop mode. Either that or it's a setting. There's something relating to dockings where you just drag it off to the side here and your app would basically minimize into a basically a quarter of your screen and then in the other quarter you could have another app going. Now it's great if you're reading something off of one page and inputting data on the other, like you're typing an essay or whatever. You can do your research on the side at the same time. So that's just a very basic overview of Windows 8. It is for the most part very familiar. If you choose to upgrade to Windows 8 or buy it, <coughs> if you want to know how long it'll take you to get used to it, I'd say about a, a half hour tops for most users, give or take, you know, 20 minutes even. It's very simple. It's not night and day compared to older versions. Here's another thing I might as well show. When you're on the charm toolbar, you also get the date and time and your Wi-Fi settings and battery. Pretty much just like a mobile phone. That's just another thing here. Since I'm done, I'm just going to lock the screen. You can sort of see what it looks like. So there's a lock screen. It's just like a tablet or a phone. Here you can view your app details. There's the in-depth view of the calendar. For this example, I have get water for a refillable water cooler tomorrow at 12 p.m. Time, date, information. There's your chat. And uh, when you lift that up, you get to the sign-in screen. You can either have your normal password or a, a four-digit PIN, you know, like one, two, three, four, sign-in. You don't have to press enter. You just quickly type it in. You're good to go. And there you have it. It's my review of Windows 8. If you have any other requests or if you want help with anything, just let me know and I'll reply to comments or messages. Thanks for watching.